Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg, and I'm here for EdChat Interactive. And uh, we're back for this when um, uh, the the platform that we're using hiccuped, and we were we could not get the uh, this original session started. Uh, so we're doing it tonight, and uh, we have two really fun, knowledgeable. Um, great presenters uh, tonight. We have Robin Williams and Mia Lodato, and they're going to be talking about data is not a four-letter word. And if you don't believe them, then you can challenge them on that uh, because they're always up for a challenge. Uh, we're doing this on EdChat Interactive, and the, the reason we're, uh, we're doing this is because we would like to present um, really compelling content, but in a way that's much more conducive to the way people learn than the typical webinar. We do that by using the Shindig platform. So you all logged into Shindig, um, and we feel it's, it's, it's a lot more fun and it's a lot more engaging. People learn a lot more. But in order to do that, you have to have a basic background into the Shindig platform. So let me first uh, present uh, what's coming up. Uh, next week, uh, we're having an, uh, an, another interesting session with an FET spe FETC speaker. Uh, FETC speakers, um, Lynn and Randy, are going to be talking about transformation. And that's how do you transform your classes? How do you transform your school? How do you transform your district? Um, all three of those. And then the following week, uh, we're going to have Susie Lolly talk about five ways video can transform your classroom. So those are our next two events. You know how to sign up on www.EdChat Interactive. Uh, let me go through the Shindig platform now. Uh, when you logged in, you saw a screen. You probably saw other people floating around. Uh, right now, you see uh, two stages. One stage has the slides. One stage has me. Um, and you see video icons icons of other people, including yourself. Uh, next to your video icon, you'll see that there's a menu. All the way to the left is some is a menu item for text chat. Uh, so why don't you try clicking on that? And uh, you, you should be able to get a screen uh, that probably looks like this. I'll just expand it for a second. Oops. Ah, darn it. Hit the wrong key. Uh, let me go back to that. Sorry about that. Um, so you should be able to expand it like, and I'll, then I'll contract it again. Um, so, uh, in that text chat, uh, that's where you can communicate with the other people or, who are here, including the two speakers. Uh, so why don't you introduce yourself? I know a lot of you, when you registered, you had questions, things that you wanted to learn tonight. Why don't you introduce yourself? Who are you? What do you do? And what's something you hope that... Uh, Mia and Robin cover tonight. Uh, when you're done, you can click the um, that icon on the left again to change it back to the to the regular screen. Um, you could also move it around. You can click the X box to close it. But um, basically, the one person who cannot see what you're typing in is me. So I'm hoping that you all have opened that text chat and that you have introduced yourself. Okay, if, when you um, close it again, actually, I'm going to go back to uh, here. This is, there's two more things that I want to introduce to you. Um, you can, uh, there's a question mark also on the menu. That's to ask a question. That question goes to me. Probably a better way to ask a question is to, is to do it in the text chat. But if you ask a question to me, I'll take the question and I'll pass it on to Mia and Robin, or if it's a technical question, I'll try to answer it myself. Um, uh, the third way of interacting on Shindig is to actually come up on stage and get into a conversation with the speakers. Um, so they're going to ask you a few times if you uh, ask you, uh, will somebody volunteer to come and uh, talk about how they might apply this to their school or with a question. When they ask you to volunteer, you click on the raise hand button, uh, I'll see that, and then I'll bring you up on stage. So that's uh, one way is of interacting is text chat. Another way of interacting is asking a question. Third way of interacting is coming up uh, on stage. And then the fourth way of interacting 
is to, and I see a couple of you are doing this even right now, fourth way of interacting is to click on the avatar of another person. And if that other person has a microphone, you can get into a private conversation with that person. And we, we will probably be doing that a few times also because Mia and Robin will probably say, um, find another person, pair up, and discuss how you might solve this problem or how, um, how this applies to your school or something like that. And as we all know, we learn best by being active, so I'd really like to encourage you to, to, to do that and to, and to interact with each other. So those are the different ways of interacting. Um, and uh, also want to note that uh, Robin and me are coming to us uh, through FETC. Uh, they are featured speakers at FETC this January, and uh, FETC is offered is offering you a code. If you type, if you register and you type in EC eight twenty three as a code, then you'll get a ten percent discount on your registration fees. So, without uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring Mia up, and then I'm going to bring Robin up, and. Okay, and looks like Mia, you're muted, or you were muted. Yeah, uh, I was muted you know. while you were talking. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Um, and there's and Robin. So uh, welcome to EdChat Interactive, and we made it this time. Uh, I think we all deserve Yay. congratulations. Now you're both <laughs> wearing kind of pinkish shirts, and so I understand that there's a big football game coming up this weekend. You're both from Florida. <laughs> So yes, I'm assuming that you're, that you're both rooting for Florida State. Is that right? Um, I'm rooting for Florida State as <laughs> an alumni of Florida State. Poor Mia had the unfortunate opportunity to graduate from the University of Miami. So this is an ongoing rivalry. And we are very, very, very serious about this thing. So this is what we will be talking about this weekend. Mia? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, and I would just like to add that um, we won't have to really do a lot of talking because on Monday when I'm decorating <laughs> Robin's cubby with um, everything that is University of Miami, we'll all be good. So, um, yeah, that's, 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 there's no talking, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, tonight, tonight what we're talking about is data is not a four-letter word. So um, I have your slides up. I'm going to pull myself down, although you can ask me to come back up anytime you want to. And uh, just let me know when to adv advance the slides. Okay, great. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, Thank first you. of all, I want to start by thanking Mitch for inviting us for this awesome opportunity. And I am Robin Williams, and me and I both work together, have the pleasure and honor of working with her at Florida Diagnostic and Learning Resource Systems. And what we do is provide technical assistance and professional development to teachers in a variety of areas. And one of the areas is um, assistive technology and instructional technology. My passion is behavior. I'm a behavior analyst. I have been for about 21 years now, as well as an educator. Um, so when Mia came to me with her wonderful idea, which she'll share with you shortly, um, we are very excited about it. So thank you for joining us. And Mia, do you want to say a word? Um, I just was really happy also to be a part of this. Thanks, um, Mitch, and thanks to FETC. Thank you all for coming tonight. We really hope that we can answer your question. I'm actually originally from Racine, Wisconsin. We had some, um, we actually had someone from my hometown who I don't know um, sign up, and I spent some time down at Miami. Um, I'm currently down at my mom's in um, South Florida for this, um, spending some time with her. And I am just so happy for technology so that we can all meet here today from all over. I saw someone was from Wyoming. Um, this is a great opportunity. Hawaii? Oh, yes. Yeah, there were some people from Hawaii. So this is a really great opportunity for us to meet you guys and um, to help um, spread our passion. So thank you guys for being here. And we hope to get to talk to you guys, whether it's in the chat or um, whether you want to come up on stage and talk. Awesome. Thank you, Mia. One thing you will learn about us through this evening is that we are very quirky, funny, laid back people. And so we want you to experience the same thing with us and have fun with us as we learn about this. 
Um, if you could please, Mitch, go to our next slide. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, here's the video. <laughs> Here's a video, just a little bit of um, an introduction to what this is. Could you play? Now this is a story all about how teaching got flipped, turned upside down. So we'd like to take a minute and be heard to tell you how that is not a four-letter word. Word? Word? Word. 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 All around the country, born and raised. Teachers are spending most of their days. Testing and assessing all day in school. Overwhelmed with it all, thinking dad, dad is not cool. cool. It's hard. It's really hard, actually. Yeah. It's kind of, but that's where we come in. <laughs> when a couple of girls, they were up to some good. Started playing with digital forms in the neighborhood. We had one little PD said, don't be scared. Dad is not bad, we got forms, forms to, to share. share. Yeah, with you, you and me. And you. <laughs> okay. I so if that little video cool, gives yeah. gives you any indication of how much fun we have in our job, and how grateful we are to be able to pursue passions, right? We both come from the field of exceptional education and teaching students with significant behavioral needs and significant cognitive disabilities, and really wanting to be the most effective teacher that we could be. So data for us became something that we knew just was a, a must a go to. We had to have it. So how can we make this easy for teachers? So we have some objectives for tonight. Uh, Mitch, if you could go to the next slide. Our objectives for you all while we are here, we do want you to tweet us as you learn and you'll see our hashtag on every single page. Data is not a four letter word. You can find Mia at spedtechmia3. And you can actually find Robin, um, that's not my handle, it's Robin BCBA. Robin BCBA is actually my Twitter handle. So if you want to tag us, find us, follow us, that would be great. We want to stay connected with you. But our goals for tonight is to share with you a product that was really Mia's brainchild. Um, we want you to know how to use forms and the teachers who come to our training, we want them to know how to use forms to help collect data and analyze behavioral data at the end of the three-part series that they spend with us, know how to understand how to deconstruct their IEP goals, to make sure their IEP goals are really written so they're collecting the information that they want to collect. Um, so changing those learning goals into statements or questions that they can accurately collect data. And then finally, determine which type of questions to ask so that they can choose the proper visual display or graph to share with parents, with other professionals that they may collaborate with so that they can make the best instructional decisions or decisions for intervention. Next slide, Mitch. So we, um, you, we actually had all of your answers to the questions that you completed when you registered for this course. And very similar to the PD, the professional development that we provide, when teachers come to our professional development, we ask them a variety of questions as they are coming in the door. We want to show them the power of Google Forms and how quickly it can collect data and then uh, take it and assimilate it into a, a way that we can easily share it and use it to determine who we're working with, what our goals are for the day, what people come already knowing, and what they want to learn. So if you could go to the next slide, Mitch. This is what we did in probably a two minute period. When we had our first group back, uh, when we were first scheduled to do this training, we, at that time we only had 15 responses. This time we had much, much more, about 83 responses, even though I'm not sure if everyone is logged on. But at that time we wanted to take just a couple of minutes, enter the information, take the information that you put in as you registered through a Google form into um, a visual graphic display. So what we learned is that 33% of you all were hoping to learn how to match your intervention or your inter instruction uh, to the data. Make sure that you were choosing interventions and instructional methods that were uh, based on the data. 26.7% wanted to know what do we do with this data? How do we analyze it once it's collecting? What are we looking for? How can the power of digital forms really help us determine 
what we're looking for and where we need to go next. 20% wanted to find alternative ways to collect data. Why are we still using pencil and paper when we have all of these intuitive methods to collect data? So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, some of you were concerned about teacher buy-in. We actually addressed that in the three-part professional development that we provide out of our center. We address legal issues as well, which me is going to talk about next, confidentiality and safety, and then how we could possibly use this with students who are within the ESOL population or ESC population. So that's just a brief overview of what Google can do for you instantly. Next slide, please. So in, in Florida and in many of the districts that we serve, we're big on learning goals and we use Marzano um, in the district that we teach from. So we always have a learning goal and we want our participants to progress to a certain level within the training. Uh, we have many participants that come to us, some with no knowledge of technology, some who are very proficient in technology, but by the end of our three days together, and actually by the end of the first day, most of our participants are at a level three. They feel like they can use the template that we create and share with them to track behavior data for their students and use it to continue to track that data and uh, show progress over time. So this is just an example of what we share with our participants in our course. Next slide. Can I just jump in here for a second? Um, Mitch, can we go back for just one sec? Um, because what we also wanted to do is with um, everyone that was here, um, if you guys could just let us know um, in the chat box where you guys feel like you are um, on that scale, that'll help us as we go forward. So can you just um, type in a one, two, uh, three, or four? And um, that'll actually help us kind of um, put this in the right direction um, with the hour that we have with you. So, oh, okay, Brooke, wow. Thanks, Robin. Okay, great. See if we get a couple of more ratings. We're not gonna, we're, we don't judge. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we got a lot of you who, who know a lot, a lot about Google, um, and that that is awesome. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to um, answer whatever questions you have. Anthony Gentile. Anthony Gentile. That, that's my mother's maiden name, and I have a cousin with that name. I'm not even joking. Correct. This is my cousin? <laughs> wow. <laughs> is this my cousin? Oh, okay. You're not my cousin. We may be is cousins. He from Wisconsin? Is he from Wisconsin? <laughs> no, actually, everybody's down crazy. here in South Florida. Um, oh, I'm okay. not even joking. Oh, Vegas. Okay. I could have a cousin in Vegas. That could work. Um, okay. Well, sorry about that little, um, we call those squirrel moments. Squirrel. Um, so, uh, but Anthony, glad to have you here too. Um, so, uh, we have threes and fours. That's awesome. So then I guess, um, you guys are going to have, a, we have a one that's totally okay too. Um, you guys are going to have some really specific questions and I want to get to those really, um, soon. I just want to touch base on security and, um, uh, there's a great, um, there's a great s skit about security. Security. I can't, which, which skit is that? Is that from In Living Color? I can't even remember. It was back in the 80s. We have all these 80s, weird um, 80s references. Anyway, as much as we'd love to have those guys standing around our computers, we know that we can't. So um, the way that we handle security with um, Google is as long as you're using a Google um, EDU, um, system with your with your school district, uh, your data is going to be very secure, um, and so that's what we have in our school districts, um, in the districts that we serve, the five districts that we serve in Florida. Um, we serve Orange County, Seminole County, Sumter, Lake, Osceola, and Florida Virtual Schools, um, and. Um, those districts that have the uh, Google um, suite for education um, are all very secure. We do tell people though, just like you would with your um, data walls, that um, you're gonna wanna enter your student's first name and last initial, just um, just to be, you know, just to be careful and, um, or just initials. Um, 
but we also have had this uh, conversation regarding, um, we've also had this conversation regarding, um, uh, what's the, it's called, Robin, help me out. Um, it is a behavior, um, a behavior tracker. People use it with the, um, with the little emojis. It's very popular. Anybody else, if you, if you know what Class I'm talking Jojo? about. Class yeah, Jojo? Class Jojo. Because a lot of people use Class yes. Dojo to track behavior. Um, and, and Class Dojo, um, we don't know about the security for that. It's, you know, people pay for it. It's free. Um, they can data mine. Um, it's the same thing that goes for Microsoft, by the way. We also do Microsoft forms. If you have Microsoft um, that's purchased by your district, again, same kind of uh, data security. Um, if you are using a personal Gmail account, we do want to... Um, we do want to caution you. So right. um, we have a question from, oh, please yes. pronounce this. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce the first name. So pl if you want to is go on mic. Yes. Is it it looks like, um, yeah. She had a question. She or he had a question about um, Google keeping all of this data. Is there a concern with that? And I think you may have addressed that. Um, just sharing that if you're using a Google for education platform, those sites are secure. Right. If you're using um, personal, you would not want to use a personal Google email to do this. Right. And, and the bottom line is um, if your district has um, set up a Google account or a Microsoft account, um, there are so many hoops to go through as far as security. We know that even for Orange County, like it is, um, we had uh, um, in Orange County um, over here in Florida, we had um, someone, um, a company that wanted to get a... Um, that wanted to get a, a contract with Orange County. It was a digital um, services uh, company, and they actually had to bring their servers to the United States. And they wanted the um, and for security purposes, and they wanted um, and they wanted to um, have the account. So that's what they did. Um, so there. So I wouldn't worry about the security. I just wanted to let you guys know that as long as it's through your district, you're fine. Um, just use nicknames or numbers or the first name and last initial for your own personal um, peace of mind, um, and you guys should be good with that. Okay. So let's um, let's advance to the next slide and. Thank you, Mitch. So this is where the journey all started. And then I'm, we're going to get some questions from you guys. Um, that is me in my classroom with my um, pre-K kiddos. Absolutely love those guys. Um, and that was um, about three years ago. I did um, pre-K. I taught um, pre-K students with autism spectrum disorders and related disabilities. And um, it was a, an absolute blast. Prior to that, I did elementary. Prior to that, um, uh, also students with um, autism and um, related disorders. Um, prior to that, um, did some high school, everything but middle school. So God bless you middle school teachers out there. But, um, you know, here I am with all of these students with such high needs and um, lots of uh, communication needs, lots of behavior needs. And we were taking data 24-7, 365. Um, you're going to see in the next slide coming up something that might be <laughs> familiar in a lot of your classrooms, which is the data wall. And then there's more data on the outside of that door. And on the inside of that door is the bathroom. And there's more, more clipboards for data there. And that's all we did all day long was, um, and, and, those um, that you're seeing right there were only clipboards for behavior, um, uh, for behavior and replacement behaviors. Um, so this came out of a need for, you know, there's got to be a better way to make it easier for all of us to um, collect and analyze the data, right? And I had this conversation with a friend of mine um, before a um, big conference um, called ATIA. Um, she's, she was from Australia and she does the same thing that I did in Australia and we were talking about it and she said something about Google Forms that was seven years ago now and Google Forms has come so far and I um, was able to meet Robin and we put it together to make it happen. Um, and this is just making things a little bit easier easier because um, for those of you teaching right now, we know the struggle is so real. 
data can be a four letter word, but not, not always. So, and next slide. Thanks, Mitch. So, um, here are every, all those um, acronyms that we think about, right, that um, are related to data that get people so um, caught up. Um, is there anything, this is where I'd love for anybody to um, ask a question um, specifically um, to data. Um, what are your hangups about behavior data um, and the like and, and collecting it? Um, we're not saying at all, and Robin can back me up on this, that um, paper and pencil and using clickers is a thing of the past. We're saying that we're going to try to um, just uh, give us other ways to help in analyzation and um, in, in, in taking down the data. So um, please go ahead and type in or raise your hand and we'll bring you up on stage with us. We want you to... Um, we want you to ask some questions now about what you want to know about data and data collection. Hey, Mia, not, Brooke has a question or a statement in the yeah. chat box. I'm not sure if we can bring Brooke up on stage. That would be great. She has a question about data being subjective. Yeah, that's great. Brooke, would you want to come up on stage and talk about this? I don't know how we make that happen. I know that... um. Mitch actually makes the magic happen yeah, with that. Here she, here she is. Ooh, la la. Hi, Brooke. Oh, you don't have a mic or a camera. Maybe I well, do. Well, um, <laughs> that's okay. One thing well, I want to um, say, say to your point, Brooke, um, during the three days of professional development that we offer, we go into great detail about how to make sure that the IEP goals are written in a way that they can collect objective data. Sometimes we find that once teachers, we ask all teachers to bring their IEP goals with them, and we find that once they get there and they're looking at them and they're reading them, like, I'm not even sure what this is supposed to be collecting. So there is a portion of the training where we talk about how to construct better IEP goals. And we talk about the definition of behavior, which is one of my favorite things to talk about as a behavior analyst. What can we see? What can we measure? This is not about what you think is happening, what's going, what you think is going on with this child. No, what can everyone agree on that they see and then they can measure so that we can make sure there's no room for subjectivity within that. So I hope that, hope that kind of answers your question a little bit. Um, when we have participants come through and they are confused about what the IEP is saying, we actually go through and break down those goals. There's a process to doing that to better determine what's being asked and what do we need to collect data for. So one of my, I had a question, which is, do you ever have the students do the data entry, enter their own uh, accomplishments or, or um, places where they've, they haven't accomplished or... You know, or That's is a it great the question. Um, primarily for what Mia and I are doing, it's just the teacher or paraprofessional entering the data. Um, some of our colleagues, we work in tandem with the Florida Inclusion Network. Uh, we've been working with them to take the power of digital forms to actually use with a program that they um, that they teach and they support students uh, with and without disabilities called Peers as Partners, where the student who may be supporting a peer who has an IEP, um, who may, they may be helping them in a general education setting, these peers, student peers, have been taught to use the Google Forms to help collect data. So that we only have a few students that are doing that. Uh, but primarily for what me and I are doing, it's teachers and paraprofessionals entering behavioral data regarding students. Well, and also I just wanted to, um, in my own personal experience, when I was working in elementary, um, I also did inclusion. And so um, just to, to speak to that point, we do have, um, we do have um, support facilitators that come to our trainings. And um, we also have staffing specialists and we have SLPs. And in the case where the students can take their data or track um, or track their progress to a goal, that's absolutely okay. We've done that. Um, in fact, you 
you want to work to that point. And I had students that would actually take those points. And there's those, um, the, 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 the teachers that are teaching um, students um, that they're gathering um, multi-tiered system of support data on, um, like with point sheets and stuff that the kids actually do. They actually, okay, I think I got a two. You know, I think I got a two today and the teacher talks them at the end of the day. Well, I think we got a three. So yeah, absolutely. This totally um, can work um, on all of those um, different levels. Um, and this can work just not in a situation where it's it was like a self-contained environment like mine, but this works with um, speech therapists, this works with occupational therapists, this works with, um, in fact, we had a bunch of occupational therapists reach out to us and say, hey, we heard some speech therapists were using your um, system and, and, and loving it. You know, how do we get in on that? Um, and, you know, it's free. Did we mention this is free? Robin, did we mention this is free? It's free. It's free. How do we forget is, that part? Right? I, I don't know. I, 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 you know, um, it's free. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, basically, um, that just covered what we were talking about, um, right over there. The other thing that's really cool about Google, and some of you already know this, is um, we can skip past that because we've just asked those questions. So um, another thing that's really cool about um, Google, in case you didn't know, um, is that you can collaborate um, across like everything. So you, um, so we could do it on. on okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be totally transparent and honest right now. Okay, here we go. See this. See, see my phone right there? I'm looking at my Google Slides on my phone. And Robin, go ahead, show them, Robin. You're doing the same thing. And we are, we are collaborating. <laughs> and we're on our As computer. We Ooh, yeah. So, um, and by the way, that's another rivalry with me and Robin. I've got an Apple. She's got an Android. Google works across all of these platforms, okay? Um, it's free, and so you can have your para take data um, on, on an iPad, on an iPhone, on an Android, on a tablet, on the computer. Um, all of this is available, um, and so that's really something really important. Um, Microsoft same thing. I don't want to just say, you know, Google, Google, Google. We love Google. Um, we really do. Um, Microsoft is the same thing. You can do it on a phone. You can do it on the computer. So the availability is so easy and um, it's just, um, it, it, it is just really accessible. I think that's the word. It's really accessible for teachers, paras, anybody that needs to take data and to share it. Because I can share right now what I'm doing with Robin, even though she's in Orlando and I'm in South Florida. And if you guys were collaborating with us, we could do the same thing. So um, it seems like we have another question here from Marjorie. Uh, what do you do with a child that is socially aware that can recognize that they are in a special class and refer not to be specialized, but you know that this child cannot go on the atypical class? You know what, Marjorie, that is a rough situation. Um, and and I think um, to that to that extent, when we talk about um, students that um, that are are working that working through that, all we can do is support them um, at the best level the best and level. consider their um, input. I, I'm so glad you're up here with us, Marjorie. Go ahead. Hi, Marjorie. I know Marjorie. She's a special <laughs> educator is. in Port Charlotte. Oh, awesome. Welcome. And she's the mother of a child with autism. Yeah, cool. We love all kids. <laughs> yeah, we can see you a little bit. We can see the top of your head. So can you kind of expand on your question? Um, I deal with kids who are street smart, who are, um, they their IQ is low. But they are aware enough to know that they are not, I'll, and I'm using the wrong terms, but I'm going to use the terms that my kids use. Today I was in the IP and I was with a child who, I know his IQ is low, but he was like, I don't want to be in a class full of retards. And I'm like, you do know my son. Okay. So he is not, he's young, so he doesn't express himself very well. So I didn't take offense to that that well. 
I mean, I didn't take offense to that, but he knows that he's in a special class, but he wants to be atypical. He's very aware. He wants to be like everybody else. I think for students like that, um, this is a way to help them kind of focus on the goals that would help them meet their, their IEP goals. So if you have a student that's street smart and maybe they're, you're serving them in your class, you're supporting them in your class, this could be a tool that you could use to help them track their own progress and help them see the change over time. The great thing about the digital forms is that as soon as the, the data is entered, there are graphic displays that can be seen as well. So kids respond well to that, right? If you can see a pie graph or a line graph that's, that's showing that progress, hey, you're getting closer to making it to your goal, meeting your IEP goals, and maybe we can get you um, spending more time in the general ed population. That's what I would say to that student. My, Mia? Yeah. yeah, no, I would have to agree. I mean, honestly, Marjorie, it's, it's incredible. Like, it, in, in the five minutes, or what I, let's see, it's 8.36. In the 30 minutes that we're sitting here, say it was a 30-minute class time, right? And you had put in data in that 30 minutes, and, and maybe he or she had inputted that data. Within that 30 minutes, you would have automatically, without you doing anything, just taking the data, it's going to automatically give you some graphs. That's it. I mean, it's like magic, honestly. It's kind of crazy. So, you know, that, and like Robin says, I think that can some, sometimes that can be um, very motivating to students. Um, and that's the best that you can do, um, at least with this system, um, to help, uh, to help students. Whereas back in the day, or even back in the day, what am I saying? Right now, people are just, all they're doing is taking tally marks, right? What does a tally mark mean to a kid? What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything, right? But if they see a graph and they go, oh, wow, look, you're going up, right? You're going up. Or today, look, you're going down. But look, you were up yesterday. That's going to be way more meaningful. So I agree right. with you, Robin. Cool. Do you want to show the template, Mia? The one that uh, we share? Yeah. Our friends? The, the the let's take data with our friends. Ooh, ah, oh, thank Ooh. you. That actually leaded right into that. Ooh, la, la. Um, so here is, speaking of just taking the data, here is um, an example of um, our data template that we do um, in our training. We call it with our friends. Um, how many of you guys actually watched that show? It was like one of my favorites. Um, and uh, so we have Chandler and we have Phoebe and we have Joey. And these are questions that we created based on behavior um, that, um, and, and you know, names have been changed to, um, what, to save the innocent Protect or what? <laughs> This is, yeah, this is not, this is, this is all fictional. Um, but you can see here, like you enter the name of the student, then um, there is a specific question for Joey, and we use a multiple choice grid to talk about the intensity. And you can see there, we could even input what's really cool about um, Google is that, and Microsoft Forms, you can do this in Microsoft Forms too, you can actually input um, a picture and a rubric. So we just actually made that uh, rubric in Google, um, um, in in just um, in your image, in either, Google either Google Images or Google Doc. Yeah, one or the other. Yeah, I think so. I think it was Google Doc. Um, and we just um, we actually took pictures off the web, put it in there, then made a little uh, chart. And so now people actually have clarity of what they're actually looking for, as opposed to, well, what does, what does light scratches look like? Well, now they can see it. Um, and I always, I, I always give uh, Robin a big thumbs up on the picture she found for broken bones and or blood because, <laughs> because it's got a <laughs> thumbs up. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then we have uh, the multiple cho uh, choice short answer duration question. Um, you can look at that right there. Notice that we put the goal above the question. You can do that. Um, you can also choose other. Um, there's lots of really um, cool tips that we figured out in order to help you in taking data. Um, but I would love to um, put this to the floor. Does anybody have a question about these um, questions and how we did it um, or, or specifically questions that you would have about your own um, your own students and how you would do that. So it seems to me that 
um, as a teacher, if, you know, I have a student that um, you know have to report on that. This is going to make it a lot easier because I have to report on the student anyhow. If I can take the um, you know the the information that I have to gather anyhow and put it in a form like this, then I can enter it as it's happening. I don't have to worry about it later on, and it gives me information that I can share with the child's parents if I want to. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's not really that, a question, that's, but that's I, I one of the things question. that we were the 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 first time we did this, our minds were absolutely blown. We do this in cohort groups where we have groups of teachers come through and they follow this process. They learn together for the entire school year. And when we first did it, just coming up with the template the first time, Mia and I were both literally every other 15 minutes like, what? Google did what? <laughs> Oh my gosh. And, and these things kind of really excite me as a behavior analyst, right? I like to look at graphs. I want to see the change over time. I want to see the progress or lack thereof so that I can make better informed decisions. That's what we're all talking about in school nowadays, right? Data driven decisions. So this type of uh, tool was just something for us that we found was so amazing. And what Google creates automatically without you doing anything just once you enter the data is amazing. So we're going to get to showing you that shortly. Okay. And, then and if you come to comment, our session at FETC, then right. you would leave with the actual template. So, so the other thing is, is as I'm looking at this, it's like, well, is, if I'm, you know, creating IEPs for the students, if I have in mind that I'm going to be integrating that IEP with the questions like this, the IEP is going to be much more meaningful. And so not only does this save me from the reporting, but it also makes the IEP much stronger, which ends up helping the student even more. Is that true? Is that what you find? Magic. Definitely. Well, let, let me be honest. After we, after we break <laughs> down those IEP goals to make them sensible. <laughs> For real. Like, listen, we have some, we have some people here who know about IEP goals. Um, so, uh, Yes, parents and, and, and admin love the graphs. And, um, oh my gosh, the too much time, Brooke. Like that, I, that is the question that we get all the time. And here's the deal. Well, first of all, we all know that IEP goals, it's the law. People, you got to take data. So we're meeting people where they're at, right? If you have never taken data right now, that's okay. I'm not judging you. I'm just trying to give you a way that you can start taking some data because it's the law. Because the last thing any of us want to do is get sued and we want to help our students in the same in the same right so that's number one number two is about the time oh my goodness the time so what we've heard time and time again is not to be punny but time and time again is how about the time right so uh what, what our teachers have actually come up in the second day they've come up with um suggestions and a couple of suggestions are this First of all, if you can get your principal to back you, you got power. So that's one, if you're lucky enough. But a lot of us, we know that some administrators don't care, right, Robin? I mean, let's be honest. They let us do what we got to do in our classroom, and um, they're not going to come that check in. First, and so, yeah, right? As of my and first few years of teaching, my principal was like, go ahead. I don't know what, to, I don't know what you're doing. Do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's a bad thing. Okay. Again, no judgment. The other time, the other thing though, is if you can't get your admin to back you, then you work with the teachers um, in one of two ways. Um, everything's built on trust, but you can go and say, okay, well guys, here's the thing. It's the law. We need to take data. So you actually can print out the entire Google form and have them bubble in question by question every minute of every day and print out multiple ones of it for them because you know some some um some um questions are going to be answered multiple times depending on what goal it is just give them a bunch of packets 50 inch thick or say or you could use this mm. and guess what and it automatically gives me graphs oh, yeah right it automatically gives me graphs so you can fill this out 
and graph it yourself somewhere, sometime, with time that you don't have. Or you can just answer the questions here. It'll automatically give you graphs. And voila, I've just saved you a heck of a lot of time. I hope that gives you a little bit of a question um, or an answer to your question, Marjorie. Um, and speaking of uh, those graphs, this is a perfect example. If you guys see the slide right here, um, it has questions. And this is what we use for FETC. And then see where it says responses by the red, uh, by the red arrow? If you'll notice, that's where um, you'll find the responses in real time, like absolutely real time, second by second. And that's where you click, and we're going to go to the next screen, and boom, that's the kind of data it's going to give you in real time. It's pretty cool, depending on the question you ask. And that's what Robin's going to get into, because what we try to do is teach you how to ask the right questions using your IEP goals. We're not going to make up new ones. Using your I unless you have to. Using your IEP goals, let's ask the right questions to get you the right graphs. And um, Robin's going to go over some of that right now um, when we yep, right. analyze so, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the questions that we had was, well, how, uh, how do we analyze data? How do we use this tool to create these graphs and then look at the data and analyze it so that we can change um, what we're doing with the student? So one of the parts of this three-part series that we provide to teachers, SLPs, MTSS, coaches, whoever comes, is we go into depth into what are we really looking for. Myself, as a teacher and a behavior analyst, I want to see a line graph. Many of the districts that we support want to see line graphs. And within that line graph, we're looking at different things. We're looking at variability of the data. Are the data points spread out all over the place uh, or are they pretty steady? Is there an upward trend or a downward trend? Those are the things that we're looking at. Um, for some of our teachers that come, Google, for the most part, provides pie graphs. And you wanna look at percentages, like out of the whole time that we've collected data, what percentage of the time did you see this behavior or that behavior? So sometimes a simple pie graph is easy enough. What we've heard from the participants who've completed our course is that parents love pie graphs. So pie graphs are easy to look at and kind of determine what's going on. So we want to make sure that we're taking all this information and putting it in a way that we could use it. If you go to the next slide, Mitch, we can show what can be done once you manipulate your Google form a little bit more. So as you can see on this slide, when we have participants come through, and this is from the actual um, form that we used at FETC last year, we'll have something similar next year when we present again. Um, as everything comes in, you'll see a couple of things. There's the date and timestamp of when the data was entered, that's column A, but then column B is the actual date of the event. Every question, the way we've set up the template, we want to track the date of the event so that we can create line graphs over time. That's a very key and important point. You may or may not want the time to be recorded. And what we teach participants is how to make some questions required to answer and some are not required to answer. Um, we also have, of course, the data aggregated by student name. So it's separated out that way. And then on and on, the sheet goes all the way to your right. But as you look at this, you can see that this looks pretty scary. Like, what in the world is this? I don't know, this is not telling me anything. This is not doing anything. What you can then do from this spreadsheet, this Google Sheet, is go to separate tabs. If you see along the bottom, we have Joey Ross Chandler 1 and Chandler 2 because Chandler's goal had two parts. We have them separated out and we've colored the tabs. And we teach our participants how to do all these things to make this this tool very useful. So you may get bar graphs. If you remember that scale that we had where we were looking at tissue damage based on the behavior that, um, that Joey was displaying, you may want to know how many times you have had a level three type of incident and how many times you've had a level four and how many times he's had broken bones. When you form your question with that type of a scale, you will get a bar graph. If you have a yes, no type of question, 
So did Ross ex exchange uh, have three successful verbal ex exchanges? Yes or no? You're going to get a percentage. This amount of the time he did, yes. This amount of the time he didn't. And that pie would just continue to change over time as people, teachers, paraprofessionals, parents, if you want to share the form with them, collect data on this goal. Next slide. Hey, Robin, you know what I'm thinking in my head when you said separated? Keep them separated. What? That song? <laughs> Keep them separated. Sorry. I get, I get to work with this crazy lady. Uh, she, yeah, <laughs> squirrel, squirrel moment. Um, <laughs> um, so one of the things that, that I told you I'm really crazy about is line graphs. And when we determined that Google could, could create this type of graph, and Microsoft does the same thing, um, and you could input a trend line because for a lot of districts that we support, those trend lines are important for MTSS coaches. So there is a simple click of a button that you can create this type of line graph if your data and the question is uh, put into the form in the correct way, which is typically multiple choice with numerical answers. And we go through all these do's of don'ts in the training. Um, you can create a beautiful line graph like this with a click of a few buttons and show changes in trend and show variability in data, what's working and what's not. So this was like a what? Seriously? All I do is click this button and that's it? That's amazing. Next slide. Mia talked before about all these words, data, duration, analyze, grass, MTSS, frequency. Oh my gosh. People come into our course and we actually start the three days out with talking about these terms, how you feel about them, what you think about them, what you think about technology, how you feel, what's going to be your barrier to this. And we believe that when forms are used properly, you can have side effects such as elation, calmness, duration and frustration, joy, and even zen. Some Decrease in frustration. Decrease. Decrease. Decrease in frustration. So, <laughs> it's uh, going down. And down. This is us in our Zen poses. Yes. Next I'm going to need slide. to practice that. <laughs> so we want you to find someone and buddy up with them and have a conversation for just about a minute. How do you think you can leverage the power of this technology in or at your work site? And find someone you, to talk to. Or talk to for us. For just a minute. Yeah. Or talk right, to so us. Yeah, we got so what I'm going to do. So what I'll do Terry, is I'm going to bring the, the two of you down, and people oh, sure. can then, then click on your avatar, you know, click on you and to talk with you, or they can click on each other. But basically, what you do mm. is you click on the picture of another person, and you're going to uh, talk about this question. I have to, I should uh, make that a little bit smaller. So I'm going to bring uh, Mia down. I'm going to bring Robin down. And oh, now I got all the power because I'm the only one up here, but I'm going to bring me down also, and then we'll all come back up in another minute or two. Okay, so let me bring Robin up, and then let me bring Mia up. And, okay, so Robin, you're up. You know, so, um, you know, as I was looking at this, at this slide, you know, the first thing is like, well, what if I don't really understand how to use Google Forms in this way? Um, you know, obviously... You know, if I'm in Florida, I can attend your workshop. If I go to FETC, um, you know, for the co you know, for relative, really low cost, I can attend your your workshop and learn how to do that. But um, maybe maybe what I want to do is that maybe my school would pay for some coaching from the two of you, even maybe virtual coaching. Um, would you do, do you do that? Could they just con could somebody contact you and say I'd like you I'd like to spend a half an hour with you for you to show me some of these yeah, forms absolutely. so I can apply them myself? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We are we're just here to help. So you have our contact yeah, information, um, right, Robin? We that's what we yeah. want to do. We want to help, and there's obviously a need. Um, I know that, yeah, you know, yeah. when we sign up for these things, we had 70 some people sign up. I do know that when it comes to eight o'clock, even myself, I've signed up for some really great ed chats and they haven't been able to make it for some reason or another. Usually it's kid related. Um, but yeah, if there's anybody out there that any, any of y'all that need our help, um, please feel free to contact us and we'll, you know, we'll try to make something happen. See, I just got rid of my kids. 
<laughs> can you do that? They, what? Well, they they <laughs> aged they aged out. Oh, they oh, aged. oh, okay. <laughs> I have teenagers. I don't think that that. Oh, um, oh, oh yeah. Oh well. I don't think I can do that. Honey. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Okay. All right. Oh, right. Um. Let's see. What else do we have? We have a couple more slides, right? Yes, um, we do. This one is just showing that um, we um, we actually have a bunch of templates that we've collected um, over the last couple of years. And one of them is an ABC checklist template. Um, so we have that. You can also use this to collect information on attendance, on, oh my gosh, um, you can collect uh, data on curriculum academic, goals. Academic goals, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, communication goals, OT goals. Um, you can do it. Um, you can do um, who's going to the bathroom, <laughs> right? How many times <laughs> someone goes to the bathroom, check in, check out. Um, yeah. So uh, it's like at a moment what happened. Yeah. You know, Marjorie, you're right. Like data is not emotional. So that's kind of nice too. Like the fact that we can put this stuff um, and ask questions in a way that it's not emotional and that we can just answer it and we can actually and what Robin and I love is the pictures, right, Robin? Like we have yeah. helped so many people create those rubrics. And it's like for the first time, people are like, wow, now it's really clear. Now, like I know what I mean and my parent knows what I mean. And yeah, so that's good too. So we, um, in the next slide, Mitch, um, we have, uh, what else do we have? On our next slide. Um, oh, nope, there's a bunch of. Yep, keep going. Um, oh, that's the walkthrough video of you were showing in this video how yeah. what it would look like if someone just clicked through um, our form. So yeah. that's Mia actually using the form and showing. Once you click here, it takes you to another section. It's it's really awesome. Check this out. I did this. Wow. Yeah, you did. Isn't that funny <laughs> how we don't remember some of these? What girl? You <laughs> So this is actually creating the form, and so you can see I'm choosing. Um, I'm I and and now we're answering right. So he's screaming and yelling. Now we're answering the form. What's the behavior? There's a click down. This is as, how easy it is to answer it, and how many minutes, um, and the intensity. I'm and, and it's that easy. So it just is just going to keep playing over and over. It's the same thing. It's a nice little yeah. GIF. So, or GIF, you. however you pronounce it. Um, and then our next slide is, there it is. Um, so this is an example of how you would use it for um, academic goals, right? We see here on the left, it's a copy of um, grade five data for a bunch of different students. You'll notice that. And the question, or the question was after reading a grade level text, um, the student will com demonstrate comprehension by answering multiple choice questions and or composing a short answer written response with 75% accuracy. And you'll notice above the, the top, it says 0%, 25, 50, 75, 100. And then um, there was no, uh, no data for that day no or data. They, that the, the person didn't uh, choose to do the work for that day. Math, same thing. And there's the goal. Um, and, and you'll notice that um, it can be do done per student or you can have multiple students. On the reading comprehension, there's multiple students there. And so if you have multiple students in a small group, you just click across and boom. Booyah, touchdown. We make miracles happen. Just like the Canes are going to do this weekend. So, yeah, so there you go. Um, <laughs> and the next slide. Um, ah, yes, this is what we were talking about in the beginning, right, Robin? Go yeah. ahead. Tell yeah. me about your Android. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that we also love about this entire thing is that um, if you notice these purple here um, on the top left-hand corner, th this is actually Mia's um, screensaver and mine. We teach our participants how to get this onto their tablets, their computer, their phone, so that the forms they're using, you can collect data anywhere, and how you can truly integrate between many different platforms, no matter what um, type of technology you are using. And that's one of the things that makes this tool so powerful um, and what makes us super excited about it. So we do like to highlight that throughout the training we provide and when we share in different um, 
in different places, FETC, other presentations, schools that we, we go to. Yeah, it's just amazing how, how it all works together. And it's so, so easy. It's easy once easy. you know how to do it, right? Once you know how yeah, to do it. Yeah, super easy. I'm just going to take a minute or so. Um, a couple of you have talked about teacher buy-in and teacher resistance. On the third day of this process, we actually spend a great deal of time talking about what conditions need to be in place in order for you to have sustainable change. It's very difficult for people to, to change their mindset from pencil, paper, data collection to technology, to having something in a server somewhere or on a cloud somewhere. Um, so we talk about all of the components that are necessary for successful implementation. That's the vision, the skills, the incentives, resources, and a plan in order to get it done. And then we talk about what's, if any one of those component parts are missing, then what are you having? What are you experiencing on your campus? So we actually spend a great deal of time talking about this and helping teachers work through this process. Um, th that's my daughter. <laughs> work through this process and uh, determine what is missing and what can we do to support that so that we can have this take place. And some of the campuses that we've supported, everyone has bought in and it's like, yes, we wanna do this all forward. And many of the um, campuses where teachers have been trained and they've taken this back, we've run into things like, well, I don't have a printer at my school or I don't even have my own laptop or my um, district doesn't allow me to input data on the computer or they don't like the graphs that it, it creates. So I still have to use their system. So we're still seeing a lot of these barriers, but um, continually coming up with solutions to break through those barriers and kind of share this information with everyone. Yeah, and Marjorie, you're definitely going to want to um, take down that, um, you know, uh, that information because that can really help. It's it's a really wonderful, you can Google it. It's a really wonderful um, system to use. And so there it is. I, that, you know, the time just flew by. Thank you, guys. Um, it did. Uh, I, I hope I hope you all feel like you can um, contact us and there's our contact information right there um, and uh, we would love to help if we didn't answer your specific question right here right now today um, or if you just need to sit and think about it for a while that's too and follow up an email um, please feel feel free to do so and go canes well, thank you for <laughs> thank you for joining us <laughs> yeah, thank you. And, I'll and, see you and Monday, lady. You. This was um, so it's it's really interesting. You've taken Google Forms, which is which is actually you know it, it can be relatively easy to use, but it's not designed for the for you know keeping track of IEPs. And you've come up with a with a really elegant way to to use Google Forms to keep track of IEP information um, and uh, the. You know, can save us all time, and also can help us help our students. So, thank you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at um, at FETC. And um, I'm assuming that you all are going to be rooting for um, for the Yankees, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> that I, I don't I, listen. I can tell you right there. Uh, I have no, um, I have, I have no allegiance there. So um, go Yankees. That's, that's cool. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> well, and, I, and I'll say I am not actually a Yankee fan, but my, my wife is a Yankee fan. And since my team isn't out, I get, I'll support my wife. Oh, that's, <laughs> I still yeah. need to figure you out. can't lose that way. Right. I still right. need to figure out if Anthony Gentile is really my cousin. This is right. It's not even a joke. <laughs> I've got like four people in my family named Anthony Gentile. What are the what are the chances? Right. There's probably only fifty of them in the country, so you probably have a ten percent <laughs> chance. Right? There he is. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, it's who knows? I. It's crazy. No. Right. Oh, it's funny. Okay. Thank well, you we'll all soon. for joining us, and and find us on Twitter. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Thanks, Robin. And thanks, Mia. All right. Thanks. And, and uh, this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm signing off for EdChat Interactive. Have another great week. And hope to see you all soon. Uh, hope to see you all next week. Take care now.